Now in this video I'd like to talk about the normal force. The normal force happens whenever two solid objects touch, like when I rest my arm on a chair or lean against the wall. Let's consider what happens if I take a book, quite a heavy book, and put it on this chair. Now imagine drawing a free body diagram for the book. The book weighs quite a lot, probably about a kilogram in this case. So that means there's a force downwards on the book due to its gravity of mg, so about 10 newtons downwards. However, the book is not accelerating downwards, it's not accelerating upwards, it's just sitting there. That means, by Newton's law, that there must be a balance of forces. So there must be some upward force, equal and opposite to the weight, but stopping it from falling down. And that's the normal force. And what's quite remarkable is that the normal force is exactly right. If the normal force is too big, the book would accelerate upwards. If the normal force is too small, it would drill a hole in the chair and fall downwards. But somehow this chair knows exactly what force it has to give to this book to keep it exactly here. And even more remarkable, let's say I replace the book with something heavier, like me. It's still keeping me suspended. Somehow the normal force has increased. It's now implying the normal force 10 times more, 100 times more. And it's still keeping me perfectly level. So how is it doing this? Well, the easiest way to think of it is to imagine this chair as a giant spring. You see when I sit on it, it squashes down a bit. It's a very stiff spring, a very high spring constant, so it only squashes a little bit. But let's say I sit on it, and let's say it's not applying enough of a normal force upwards. In that case, I will go further down, I will compress the spring more. As it compresses more, it will apply a bigger and bigger force until eventually it balances everything and it keeps me steady. If I push down too hard, I now compress the chair even more, which means it will push up harder and it will push me back up until things are in equilibrium. So treating this as a spring is the way to explain how normal forces always give exactly the right force. Why are they called normal forces? They're called a normal force because it's a normal as in right angles. It's at right angles to the surface, not normal as in common, though it is very common. How do you calculate it? Well, in principle, for something like this chair, you can actually work out what the spring constant is. You can put different weights on it and see how much it bends, measure the spring constant, and then when someone sits it, you can solve the force balance and work out how much it's squished and therefore what force it will apply back. But that is usually too complicated. Normally the way you work out a normal force is by working backwards from its effects. So in this case, if I'm leaning on it, you can work out how much force I'm applying to it. And as I'm leaning on it and I'm not falling down, it must be applying just the right force to stop me sinking into or being flung out of the surface. Likewise, if I put a book on the surface, the normal force must be just whatever you need to stop the book sinking in, being flung up into the air. OK, let's see how we actually work out the normal force. As an example, let's consider a weight sitting on an inclined plane. That might be a book resting on a slope or something like that. Now, the book is not sinking into the ground. It's not bouncing up off the ground. It's not sliding up and down. Therefore, the forces on it must balance. If they didn't balance, it would be accelerating in some way. That's you know, F equals ma. So let's draw a free body diagram for the book. It's going to have mg downwards, its weight. It's going to have a normal force, which by definition is normal too, at right angles to the surface. And it's probably going to be a friction force pointing up the slope to stop it sliding down. If, there, if it was an icy slope, then the thing would just slide down regardless. So there must be friction necessary to keep it there. So if we draw it here, we've got friction, normal force, and the weight. Now, how do we work out the normal force? Well, we could, in principle, treat the slope like a spring, work out how much it's bent and how much it's sinking in. But the much easier way is to say, we know the normal force must be enough to stop it sinking into the ground or bouncing off. So that means the force out of the surface and the force into must be equal and opposite. 
If they weren't, it would be not just sitting there. So what we do is you work out the net force into the surface, and the normal force must be equal or opposite to that. So in this case, the net force in is coming from the weight. It's the component of the weight along this direction here. Now this angle is theta here. This one here is 90 minus theta, so by normal triangles you can work out that angle there is theta. This is the hypotenuse, this is the adjacent. So we know from the normal definition of cos, cosine, that cos theta equals adjacent, which is this component here, let's call it weight normal, over the total weight, mg. So the normal component of the weight is equal to mg cos theta. That's the component of the force pointing in, therefore it must balance the normal force, equals the normal force. All worked out. And this is generally how you do it. You always look at what other forces are trying to push something into the surface, or possibly pull it off, and the normal force will be whatever you need to stop that happening.